In this video, I'm going to compare two different methods for using Zigbee directly with Home Assistant. I'll be comparing Zigbee Home Automation, also known as ZHA, with Zigbee to MQTT, and I'll give you my reasoning for why I think ZHA is the better choice if you're starting fresh with Home Assistant and Zigbee. Hey Home Automation Guy, start the show. So why do we need ZHA and Zigbee? What does it do for us? Well, normally you'd need to buy a different smart hub for almost every different smart home vendor that you use in your home. I use these Philips Hue lights, Sonoff door sensors, and Akara motion sensors in my house. And if I wasn't using Home Assistant, I'd need to buy three different smart hubs and control them using three different companies' apps. Instead, I prefer to plug one of these $30 USB dongles directly into the computer running Home Assistant, in this case a Raspberry Pi, and I can now use all these devices without buying any extra hubs or signing up to any new cloud services. But before you compare your Zigbee devices with Home Assistant, you'll need something in the middle to bridge the gap, and that's where ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT come in. I have personally used both of these integrations. I use Zigbee to MQTT for the Home Assistant that controls this actual house that I live in, and I use ZHA for my test Home Assistant, which I use for demoing things on this YouTube channel. This video will be based on my experiences and use cases, and I'll be evaluating the two integrations through four different categories. Zigbee device compatibility, functionality, performance and stability, and ease of use. The first area I will focus on is compatibility with Zigbee devices. Does ZHA or Zigbee to MQTT work with more Zigbee devices that exist in the market today? Thankfully, someone called Blackadder maintains a list of Zigbee devices and which platforms they work with. You can see on this list a blue Home Assistant icon for when a device is supported by ZHA and the yellow Zigbee to MQTT icon when a device is supported by that platform. As we scroll down the list, we can clearly see more yellow icons than blue icons. In fact, I counted them all, and at the time of recording, there were three times as many devices supported by Zigbee to MQTT than ZHA. I personally have also noticed that some individual devices have more features and functionality when used with Zigbee to MQTT rather than ZHA. For example, this Sapkara Magic Cube. I've previously made a video about this, and it behaves differently depending on which platform you're using. With ZHA, you can trigger automations based on which side of the cube is facing up, taps, double taps, shake, and drop. But it doesn't support triggering different automations when you twist the cube depending on what side is facing up. However, Zigbee to MQTT does support this. This means I can twist the cube left and right with the light bulb side showing up, and it will dim and brighten the lights in my office. If I put the speaker side to the top and twist the cube, it lowers and raises the volume of my Google speaker. This type of multi-twist functionality doesn't work with ZHA, and I'm sure there are other Zigbee devices that work differently on each platform. For these reasons, I declare Zigbee to MQTT the winner of this first compatibility category. The second category is functionality. Does ZHA or Zigbee to MQTT support more functionality as a platform? Both of them offer tons of features, but I'll focus on the parts that I think are most useful to the majority of Zigbee users. Firstly, they both support Zigbee groups. Zigbee groups are really useful, and it's important to note that these are different from Home Assistant groups. Imagine you've got three Zigbee light bulbs in a light fitting. If you add these to a Home Assistant group called Living Room Lights, and then turn it on via Home Assistant, it will send three different on signals over the Zigbee network, one to each light, because they're addressed as three individual Zigbee devices. Now, if you create a Zigbee living room light group and ask Home Assistant to turn the group on, it will only send one Zigbee on signal. This decreases the congestion on your Zigbee network, keeping the network clear for other signals to get through. It also makes it more likely that all three lights will turn on simultaneously rather than a fraction of the second after each other. Either way, both ZHA and Zigbee both support Zigbee groups, so they both get one point for that one. Both platforms also support modifying the device type if it was incorrectly detected. I once paired a generic Zigbee light bulb, and for some reason it appeared in Home Assistant as a switch entity instead of a light. I used this feature to change the detected device type to make it work properly. Both platforms also support the ability to change the wireless channel that the Zigbee network is using, which is useful for improving your network performance, or if other Zigbee or Wi-Fi networks in your area are using the same channel. So far this category is a tie, as both platforms support a wide range of Zigbee functionality. The final piece of functionality is also supported by both platforms, and that is over-the-air updates of your Zigbee devices. 
Over-the-air updates allow you to wirelessly update the software or firmware that is actually running on your smart devices, just like doing a security update on your phone or computer. Applying software updates will likely increase the security, performance, and stability of your smart devices, so it's important to do them when new updates become available. At the time of filming, ZHA only supports over-the-air updates for IKEA Tradfree and Leadvance Zigbee devices, whereas Zigbee to MQTT allows you to update IKEA, Leadvance, Philips Hue, some Xiaomi devices, and several others as well. A lot of people, including me, use Philips Hue devices, so for this reason I'm going to declare Zigbee to MQTT the winner of this category as well, but not by much. The third category is performance and stability. How well do ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT work? Do they ever break? I have over 60 Zigbee devices connected to my main Zigbee to MQTT, and I've only twice had problems with it since setting it up over a year ago. One of those times was after I had a power failure. I had to repair three of my 60 devices because they lost connection with Home Assistant. Another time I had to unplug and replug in my USB stick because my sensors stopped working and the light stopped coming on. I have about 10 devices running on ZHA for my other Home Assistant setup, and I've only once had to repair a device after I forgot about it and the battery went flat. Other friends of mine use ZHA exclusively on much larger Zigbee networks, and they have only had minor mishaps as well. Both systems react instantly when I ask the lights to be turned on, so the performance is great as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to declare both of these platforms awesome in this category, so it's a tie. The final category is ease of use. I've broken that into two areas. How easy is it to set up, and how easy is it to use on a day-to-day -day basis? ZHA is the easiest to install. Once you've plugged your USB stick in, you just need to go to Configuration, Integrations, and Add New Integration. From here, you can search for ZHA and click Install. If you have a supported USB stick, you can now also just plug it into the device that Home Assistant is installed on, and it will auto-detect that you've connected a Zigbee coordinator, and it will prompt you to install ZHA. Installing Zigbee to MQTT is a little more complicated. If you're using Home Assistant OS, and you see the Supervisor item in your left-hand navigation menu, then you can install it as an unofficial add-on. You also need to install something called an MQTT broker, which sits between Zigbee to MQTT and Home Assistant. That's why it's called Zigbee to MQTT. It's a bit of a faff, to be honest. Once they are installed, though, they're really both easy to use. Pairing new devices in both ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT is really straightforward. Just click the Permit Join or Add Devices button, and then click the Pairing button on whatever device you have. I'm going to have to crown ZHA to be the winner of this category, because it's just so much easier to set up than Zigbee to MQTT. In fact, this is the main reason why I recommend ZHA to everyone who wants to get started with Zigbee and Home Assistant. Once you have a Zigbee USB dongle and some Zigbee smart devices, you can be up and running in minutes. You can see that there isn't really much difference between the two platforms these days. Back in the day, ZHA wasn't as good as it is now, and Zigbee to MQTT used to be the clear choice in terms of functionality and compatibility. The Home Assistant developers have since put in a ton of work into ZHA, and has become an amazing integration. The only reason I would recommend Zigbee to MQTT is if you find yourself with a bunch of Zigbee devices that are incompatible with ZHA, or if you're already familiar with and using MQTT and Home Assistant for other reasons. If you're already using either ZHA or Zigbee to MQTT, I would find it difficult to recommend that you switch to the other platform unless you have a really big reason. As the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, then don't fix it. Switching between the two platforms will mean you need to repair and reset up all of your Zigbee devices, all of your automations, and dashboards as well. For me, this would take days and be a major inconvenience as everything in my house would stop working, so I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. No matter which platform you choose, directly connecting your Zigbee devices to Home Assistant allows you to unlock really powerful home automations. You can see some examples of these Zigbee home automations here and here. If this video has made you want to ditch your Zigbee hubs, pair devices directly with ZHA, I have a video showing you exactly how to do that here. If you thought this video was useful, then please give it a thumbs up to let me know, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, and together we can make your home smarter.